church honours the memory of St. James the Apostle, the brother of our Lord. And I would like to share with you some verses from the letter he wrote, which is one of the books of the New Testament. Let us first clarify what the title Brother of Our Lord means. St. James was a child of St. Joseph, who was the foster father of Christ and betrothed to the Theotokos. But St. James was born from a former marriage of St. Joseph. When he was betrothed to the Theotokos, St. Joseph was a widower. Sadly, some Protestants misinterpret the scriptures and claim that the Panagia had more children besides the Lord Jesus. This is silly and blasphemous. St. James was a highly respected uh, member of the early Christian church and he became the first bishop of Jerusalem. And in his 30 years as bishop, St. James converted many of the Jews to Christianity. And annoyed by this, um, the Jews put him to death. The letter written by St. James is very interesting and very powerful. St. James does not mince his words. He asks his readers very simple and sometimes very painful questions. From the letter of St. James, I would like to share with you three passages and ask you to think about the message they send to us. The first passage I'd like to bring to your attention is the following. If any man among you seem to be religious and writeth not his tongue, but deceiveth his own heart, this man's religion is vain. And when the Venerable Bede commented on this passage, uh, which is indeed very strong, Bede says, We must restrain our tongue from slanders, lies, blasphemies, foolish conversations, even from the very act of speaking too much. So St. James is not telling us that um, using foul language or telling lies is a sin. The very act of speaking too much is something a Christian should avoid. In the book of Proverbs we read, In the multitudes of words there wanteth not sin, but he that refraineth refrain, his lips is wise. And St. John of the Ladder also tells us, Deliberate silence is the mother of prayer, increase of knowledge, and unseen progress. Talkativeness is a sign of ignorance, a door to slander, a servant of falsehood, and the darkening of prayer. So, silence and not saying too much is a good thing. The second passage I want to read to you is equally strong. The higher the labourers who have reaped on your fields, which is of you kept back by fraud, crieth, and the cries of them which have reaped are entered into the ears of the Lord of Sabbath. God is not an unjust spectator. On the contrary, God is deeply concerned about the injustice and oppression which cause such suffering. He takes note of every wrong the privileged and the powerful inflict upon the poor. A just wage is the legitimate fruit of work. To refuse or withhold it is a serious sin. And I'm very saddened to hear about workers being exploited, people working without proper insurance, employers taking advantage of their staff because their English is poor and they don't know the law in this country. In the book of Deuteronomy, at the beginning of the Old Testament, we read, Thou shalt not oppress a hired servant whether he be of thy brethren or of thy strangers, at his day thou shalt give him his hire. And when talking about defrauding workers, St. James uses the same um, phrasing used in the book of Genesis about murder. The Lord said to Cain, The voice of thy brother's blood crieth unto me from the ground. So the second message, not paying a worker a fair wage, is a very serious sin. And the third verse of St. James's letter I wish to read to you is one that troubles many Protestants who believe in a kind of press button salvation. And it exposes people whose faith is just theory but without any practice. What doth it profit, my brethren, though a man say he hath faith and have not works? 
Can faith save him? Faith, if it hath not works, is dead. We can all know the commandments, the prophecies, the truths of the faith, but if this is not put into practice and does not end up in good works, it is of no use. If faith in Christ does not bring us to conform to his way of life, then it is useless. St. Athanasius says, Christianity is not mere philosophy, but life in the light of the Lord Jesus Christ. And St. John Chrysostom tells us, even if somebody believes rightly in the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit, if he does not lead the right kind of life, his faith will not help him at all as far as his salvation is concerned. So the third message is our Christian faith has to be manifested in good deeds or else it is pointless. And I'll end my sermon today with a prayer which actually comes from a Christian poem. O Lord, may all we say and do reflect the faith we have in you. For faith is meant to change the way we live our lives from day to day. So the prayers of our Heavenly Fathers, Lord Jesus Christ, our God, have mercy upon us and save us.